Okay, we're covering molecular ionic and net ionic representations of reactions. We're, so we're showing the same reaction three different ways. And now what I'd, what I'd like you to be able to do is starting from a sentence that just names the products, uh, names the reactants. Now these are, this part here is called the reactants. And this part here is obviously called the products. So starting from a, uh, a question that only names the reactants, you should be able to uh, write their chemical formulas and then predict what the products are going to be. This is a double displacement reaction. So you'll be able to show how the metals switch places with the non-metals. You also have to know ahead of time which one of the two is going to be the solid. So in this case, I've shown, uh, I've asked you to show all three versions of the reaction between silver nitrate and calcium chloride. Silver has a plus one charge, it's a transition metal. You can look that up on the periodic table. You see there's a little small number one written above the symbol for silver. That tells you that that's the preferred charge for silver. Calcium is a group two metal in the, uh, the alkaline earth metals. They all like to have a plus two charge. Whereas chlorine is a halogen and it likes to have a minus one charge. So how do you combine calcium and chlorine so that you have a neutral substance with no charge? And that is by, some people like to do what's called a crossover method. You show calcium is plus two, chlorine is minus one, chloride is minus one, and the number that goes on the charge for calcium becomes the number for chlorine, or chloride, sorry, and uh, the minus one for chloride goes to calcium. So the formula is calcium chloride. There are two chlorides combining with every calcium. That's how you know the, the um, formula for calcium chloride from its name, but you have to know where these elements fall on the periodic table so that you can predict what their favorite charges are. As for the polyatomic ions, it's a good idea to memorize all the most common ones because if you don't know what their charge is, how are you gonna write the chemical formulas? That's usually the biggest stumbling block to understanding how to write molecular equations and the most intimidating part. Once you have all the chemicals translated into their formulas, you have silver nitrate combined with calcium chloride, they have an AQ symbol after them, which means they're both dissolved in water. If you look at the solutions, they would look clear, but when you mix them, you get a gray precipitate. And that gray precipitate is the silver chloride that forms in the reaction. So that's one of the symbols of the reaction. You get some, a precipitate forming. Here's the precipitate. The other stuff, calcium nitrate, stays in solution. So I put the AQ symbol after it. It doesn't form a precipitate. It, it, the, uh, the calcium and the nitrate are more attracted to the water than they are to each other. So they stay in the solution. That is the molecular equation. We show everything um, combined for both reactants and products. In the ionic equation, you show how the substances break up in aqueous solution to form ions. So we see the silver forming an aqueous ion, the nitrate is aqueous, the calcium is aqueous, the chloride is aqueous. After the reaction, the calcium, no, sorry, the silver and the chloride are more attracted to each other than they are to the water, so they form a precipitate which falls out of solution. So we write S to show that it's a solid, that it's a precipitate. The other two remain in aqueous solution. And then the final step, we cancel out everything that has remained unchanged before and after. So this is why these ones are canceled out. They're called spectators. They're spectator ions because they don't actually do anything. They just sit there in solution. And what's left is the net ionic equation. And I've shown here that there's two silver cations, two chloride anions combined to form silver chloride in the solid state. That's really what the reaction is. And because there's a two in front of everything, we can cancel all the twos and write it in lowest terms. Silver cations would be chloride anions to form silver chloride as the precipitate. Any questions? Yes. Um, how do you know which one of the products are solid? Okay, uh, you have to know ahead of time, how do you know which one of the products is the solid? You have to know ahead of time which one of the two is soluble in aqueous solution. So you can look up what are called solubility tables that will tell you whether something is soluble in water or not. Solubility is just a measure of whether the constituent ions, the things that make up the molecule, are, are more attracted to the water or more attracted to each other. If they're more attracted to each other, they stick together and they form a precipitate. If they're more attracted to the water, they stay in aqueous solution 
and looks like a clear solution of, of water. You can't tell there's actually anything in there unless, there's the, unless the two things recombine and come out of solution. 